we are going to do a partial trip test of the Victaulic Firelock 768 uh, drive out. So this is the Victaulic uh, 768 uh, dry valve and you'll see here it says dry alarm valve and basically this is an alarm valve um, it, with the exception that it has a piston on the back that's going to hold the clapper shut so let's come around so this is a little bit different setup than their previous discontinued 756 but uh it's all built into inside here instead of the screw in piston. But yeah, basically it's the same uh, idea. It's just there's gonna be a piston holding the latch shut, keeping the valve closed. But when that's open, this operates as just like an alarm valve would. So we will uh, kind of go over a little bit here. So here's your actuator uh, that's making this all low pressure. And there isn't, like a lot of dry valves are a differential dry valve, differential pressure. They're typically like a six to one differential. Um, this one is not, it's a mechanical uh, dry valve. So once the air pressure comes off of this actuator, that's gonna allow the, mechanically operate, allow the valve to mechanically open. So, basically what we have is right now we have system air pressure and these operate at a low pressure they only need 13 psi um, in fact 20 is the maximum on them so we're right at the 15 here uh, that's that's beautiful uh, but yeah 13 is the minimum 20 is the maximum uh, I see them over pressured all the time and that brings me to another point if the pressure you know we're at 15 pounds so I it just I do not recommend using an air water gauge on any dry system in my opinion I, I prefer to see an air gauge a separate air gauge so you can get a good reading so you can see you know on the air water gauge how they read compared to an actual you know strictly only air it gives us a lot better reading so we're able to see like here's five six seven eight you know we can count all the way up so it, it, we just get a lot better reading because this valve is probably going to trip you know if it only needs 13 pounds then it's going to trip down you know under the 10 well right here we hit 10 so because here's 40 30 20 there's 10 so under that i really don't know what it is you know with the valves tripping at and th these gauges just work a whole lot better on a low pressure valve um, but i just prefer them on all dry valves but we're going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt and assume that he was just out of air gauges when he was replacing the gauges so he had to put one in there and like i said these are rated for air it's fine to use it's an air or water gauge but you get a lot better easier to read um, if you use just an air gauge so little pet peeve so we have our air coming in and this is a it's got a strainer in there and it kind of filters but here's our actuator and the air pressure is pushing down on that actuator and then it comes through here and feeds into the system and it's also you got the uh, supervisory low air switch here but so long as we have air pressure on the actuator holding shut, then this actuator is closed. So the water cannot get through here and out to drain. So if we come around, we have, let's look down further. So this is on our supply side, uh, supply water side. We have, looks like that's been leaking. We'll write that up. But uh, we got our water coming up comes up through here you can see we have a ball valve it's open and it's going to go through this strainer and it's going to fill inside of there onto that whole push rod that's holding the latch and the clapper shut which will open the valve later and see all that 
So that's held shut now, keeping the clapper shut. So then that water pressure builds and comes around to that actuator. And that actuator's closed because of the air pressure pushing down here. So that water cannot get through to this, which is going around to a drain. So now we have that holding the latch closed, which is holding the clapper closed. And then we have our system water pressure coming up to that clapper. And it's held shut. And then the system's got the supervisory air filling the system. So now let's say a fire breaks out, the fire sprinkler head activates, the air releases out of the system. And when that happens, the air, you know, it comes completely out of the system. So it comes off of here and off of the actuator. And once that happens, this diaphragm inside the actuator lifts up, which allows the water that's built up here to discharge to drain. Well, once that happens, this is uh, restricting the flow of the water coming in. So, you know, it's a, we got more water discharging through here out the drain than we do coming in. So this water pressure comes back off of that whole push rod assembly and off the latch and then it allows the clapper to open and we now fill the system with water and get water to the activated sprinkler head into the fire. And so that's basically how they operate. And so what we're gonna do today is a partial trip and uh, we just need to verify that the valve's gonna operate and then we'll open it up, clean inside and reset. Before I do that, I am going to switch this gauge out with that air gauge so I can get a better reading instead of having to write less than 10 for the trip. Cause that's all I can do on this gauge. Cause we really, we're guessing if we put anything else. So I would typically just write less than 10. But I'm just going to switch this gauge out with the air gauge so we can get a good reading. Uh, also, you'll see here, this gauge is just indicating our priming water pressure, which is that, that water that's holding the uh, clapper shut. This dry valve will work good for the test because this is actually our inspector's test right here. So you can see everything happening. Uh, someone labeled this auxiliary drain and then they wrote on their ITV and I did confirm this is the ITV. Uh, it's just piped back to this point. Uh, the whole point of the inspector's test valve is we are going to discharge water to the outside and simulate a sprinkler head operating. Um, so this one is going to uh, trip really fast. And the reason for that is they do not have an orifice in this inspector's test. So that's why I looked around to verify if uh, there was a, you know, another inspector's test somewhere, but there is not. This is the, the inspector's test, the only one I could come up with and that anyone knew of, uh, but it's not accurate because it doesn't have the orifice in it uh, to simulate a sprinkler head going off. So it's basically going to be a one inch opening, which is, you know, equal to at least a couple heads going off. Um, now over here on their wet system, they did it right. They're using a sight glass, which has a half inch orifice built into it. Um, and that's the proper way to do it. Uh, they should have put an orifice in here somewhere. But anyways, we'll have a really fast trip time. The first thing I did was I went ahead and went through and I operated all my control valves. I have four of them on here. Um, I went ahead and operated this one, even though we're going to do it again here. But uh, Next, I'm going to, I'm not really doing a main drain test. Uh, I can, but I need to do it again at the end of it because we're going to close this valve. But what we want to do before the test is we want to flow the main drain. And the reason for that is if, if we have any debris in here or anything, we just want to flush everything out. But let's just say hypothetically, I'm flowing this and I start hearing rocks come through indicating there was an underground break somewhere and they made a repair and some rocks got into the system. You know, I want those rocks, I want to find out about that now. I don't, you know, if I hear them going through the main drain, that's a good time 
to notice this problem because we're simply taking them and throwing them out the main drain. So we know if there's any in, it's gonna be from here back to the backflow. So let's say I didn't do this and I went ahead and did my uh, dry, you know, I did my trip test. Now granted on this one, we're doing a partial trip, so we're not gonna be letting, letting as much water in, but if this was a full trip and there were rocks or any debris, anything in the system, we're going to throw them up into all of our sprinkler system. You know, by the time we hear the rocks flying through there, uh, it's too late, they're all up in the system. So you always wanna make sure that you do a main drain test, you know, open it up fully uh, prior to tripping the system. But then you need to do it again at the end of the system because an FPA 25 requires us to do a main drain test after we operate a control valve. So basically you're gonna do it twice. So if you, if you want on the first one, you don't really need to take the pressures. You can get your pressures on the last. You can do it either way you want. Just make sure you're doing two, two main grade tests. So I was able to find this in the handbook of NFPA 25, uh, 2023 edition. But yeah, it is actually in the handbook that they recommend that you do it that way. Uh, our alarms are called off, they're on test. So residual was the pressure while it was flowing, which was 40. I'm gonna go ahead and write mine down. But again, we gotta do this again at the end of the test because we'll be operating this. And then right now our static is right at 48. And if you recall before, we were at 100. Uh, so that would have been static one, and this is static two. Uh, and that's normal to see or, you know, it's, it, it's, it, it happens. Uh, the reason we're seeing, you know, we've had such a high static pressure in the beginning is because uh, just the, you know, water, they could have had a water surge that got, you know, came through and you have a uh, backflow preventer that's not gonna allow that pressure to come back. Uh, so that could have happened at some point, the pressure was high. And then another thing is just thermal expansion. Uh, the you know, as the, the water heats up in the piping. Um, but, so it's, it's just not uncommon to see a higher static pressure in the beginning than what you get on the, at the end of it. So I put the air gauge in and did away with the air water combo gauge. And you can see we, well, I don't know if you guys can read it, but uh, we are at 12 pounds. So the minimum is 13 on this, so, um, you know, those air water gauges, they they don't read as close. It, it, it's, you know, it's hard to see because like I said, on them, this is 10. You know, we start out, this is our zero range and then our first reading is 10. So it's hard to get them real accurate. So now I put the air gauge in, I can see we're actually a little low. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and correct that before I do the test. Um, just because we'll have a more accurate test. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that by just one PSI. But...
All right, so our air pressure is a little bit better. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do now, and you wanna be real careful when you do this, that I'm going to, I wanna make sure that we don't have too much water in here. When you get too much, basically this valve, it does not need any priming water, but it is designed to have water up this high. Um, and that's just, you know, any moisture in the system or water that was left after a trip test that accumulates back. But we want to check and make sure that we don't have an excessive amount. And the reason is that can kind of affect, even though this isn't uh, a differential dry valve, it could still affect operations. And uh, anyways, we're just going to go ahead and on a differential dry valve, it will affect the trip time because it's adding more water column to it and that will add more pressure and it will cause it to trip slower. Uh, I don't believe it'll really affect this one that much because it is a mechanical valve, but I am still going to do it. And like I said, I'm not necessarily telling you to do this, but because you can easily let too much out. Okay, I just just a little bit, and I do have uh, it's it's all air, so we're good. Um, I don't like. I wish they would put you know somewhere to check that to make sure that you don't have too much water in there um, without opening this. What I've seen guys do is put a little uh, quarter inch valve on here and run a hose to drain, and then they'll just check it right there, like when they add the system. Um, I think that's a great idea. All right, so our next step is we're going to partially close this. Every three years, we are required to do a full trip. That was our tamper on the alarm, so that's good. But yeah, so every three years, we're gonna be required to do a full trip. Um, but this is one of the off years, so we'll be doing just a partial trip. And we're just wanting to make sure that all this functions. On the third year, you're doing a full trip because you want to make sure you can get water to the inspector's desk in the uh, right amount of time. So I've got to close some, and I'm just going to open my drain. basically want to make sure I have enough water on here to, to really get it to open up uh, but that I can so this one it doesn't matter as much because we're not we do not need to latch the clapper open on a lot of dry valves the clapper needs to latch open so it can drain back on this particular valve it's not as critical because it's not going to actually uh, drain back you're only going to be able to drain it to this level which Again, I'll show you why I don't like that part either. Uh, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and, and do this. So we got our valve partially closed. Uh, we're going to note our air pressures. We already did our static and residual, so now I need to know what my air pressure is. We are at 14 PSI. Water pressure is at about 50 right now. So then we will set this down. So I've, I've cried about this in every video, but I've hurt my wrist somehow. I don't know, just getting old, something's wrong there. So it's going to be hard for me to close it right-handed. Anyways, um, here we go. So all I'm going to do is, this is my inspector's test, and I'm going to open it. That's going to simulate a sprinkler head going off. Like I said earlier, this one's not quite right because it's missing its orifice. 
uh, I even looked around, I thought, well, maybe someone, you know, sometimes they'll get uh, lazy on the install and they'll just leave like a two by half bushing and you gotta go screw the bushing in uh, on the main drain before you do your test. But I looked around, there's not even one. So we'll do it as it's installed and write it up. Uh, explaining, you know, that's not correct. And you gotta be careful too, because you don't know how the systems are designed. Some systems are designed to have more than just uh, one sprinkler head activating. So uh, you do gotta watch that. This is a really small system. I know it's just supposed to have one. But anyways, here we go. We're gonna open it and we're gonna start timing. We will know what pressure it was at when the system tripped. So one thing I noticed is we did not, okay, there's our low air, that's good, but we did not get an alarm. The problem during, let me silence. So now we'll shut our air off. So we did not get the alarm flow, uh, water flow, you know, to the alarm pressure switch over here. Uh, during the trip, but that's the bad thing during a partial trip is you really don't know because it probably didn't build up enough water pressure to send it over to that. Um, if this was if this was a full trip and that didn't come in, we definitely want to write it up. Um, but being it's only a partial, it's it's a hard one to write up because we just probably didn't have enough water pressure for it to set it off. Um, we will do a manual test on it, but just because it works on the manual test does not mean that it will function when the valve trips because there could be blockage in the intermediate chamber, um, you know, or the you know of the alarm valve. But anyways. Uh, one thing I'm going to do now is uh, we're just going to try and clean this out a little bit. So I'm just letting some water up in here. And then we'll let it back out. I'm just trying to flush this a little bit before we open this up to clean it. So I used to have a small, like, what is it, one, two gallon trash can or whatever, and it, you know, it, it's a rectangle shape, and it would fit under here pretty good, and that's pretty handy. I gotta get a new one because the bottom of it cracked. So unfortunately, we're gonna get a little water down. So even though this all resets, you know, right now that clapper's reset in there. Um, we could reset the system. We don't have to open it and reset the clapper. But what we got to do is open it to clean in here and inspect everything. Um, so, if it was just, uh, you know, you had a leak in the system or something and you came in on a service call, you wouldn't need to open it up. But once a year, it needs to be opened up and inspected. All right, so you can see inside here, uh, it's kind of funny, that cold air is coming back through the pipe, kind of steaming. It's, uh, it's a little cold out today. Anyways, so you can see how that pushes down onto the clapper and holds it shut. So when there's water pressure in that back, 
that's going to push this out, which is down here, going to hold the clapper shut. So then once that water pressure comes off and that releases, then the water pressure on the clapper will force it open. And then it springs shut. They got a lot better spring on these. Uh, used to be all your attention came from here, but on, on the old 756s. I was actually kind of surprised to see that flip like that. But anyways, uh, we're gonna clean this up real good and put it back together. So I apologize for the alarm panel beeping, those stupid silent night panels. <laughs> uh, the code was written up on there, it was just 1111, I believe, but uh, I could not get that to silence. So, uh, and it, it would silence when I did the supervisory, like the tamper, but I couldn't get the alarm to silence. But anyways, uh, so here I pulled those plugs out and I'm driving the pin out on this clapper. It's pretty dirty in there. So uh, I would recommend you use a punch and hammer, not a pipe wrench and screwdriver, but whatever works. Uh, so here I just got a bucket of water and I'm gonna clean this up. I got a Brillo pad, or not Brillo, but a uh, Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, here what I'm doing is I've got the control valve open just a little bit, and I've kind of closed my main drain a little, so I'm getting some fresh water to come up, and then I'm using that and just rinsing around in the valve and then letting it uh, come back and into my bucket, and then I'll dump the bucket, and I'll keep doing that until I got everything clean in there. So those plugs I pulled out, they have an O-ring on them. So I'm using this silicone grease here and that is meant for O-rings. Um, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of, of that around those O-rings. It just helps uh, make sure you don't uh, get a O-ring bound up in there, torn or anything. So I like putting it on there. And then we'll do the same on the other side and put that back together. So now we'll take the clapper it's all cleaned up and get it set in there and just kind of feel around, make sure it lines up right. Set that spring back on top and then take that rod and put through there. And just get everything all lined up and then it'll slide in. I've already put that plug in on the left side so it slides into there and then we'll grab the one for the right side here and we'll put it in and get that tightened up. So if you take a look in here, right there, and there, there, all the way around, are these little tiny holes. And those are what are going to let the water get to the alarm switch. It'll go into what we would consider an intermediate chamber on a typical dry valve, um, but it's you know, this is acting as an alarm valve, so that's the passageway to get the water to the alarm switch. So it doesn't take much to plug them up, so you want to keep everything clean inside these valves. So that's why it's important to open it up and get everything cleaned up. So we will go ahead and close the inspector's test screen. And... We're going to go ahead and start filling the system with air. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Uh, so here, these are called auto vents. And what that's going to do is when I start putting air on here, that's going to be leaking. And that's normal. That's what you want. Uh, in fact, it doesn't want to reset until... You basically around 10 pounds. I'm gonna when I get 10 pounds of air on the system, then I'm gonna come in and lift up on this, and that should cause a, a, a little seat in there, a ball like to come up. And if there's enough air pressure, it's gonna hold it up and keep it sealed off. But we want it open right now because we want to exhaust any water that might be caught in here. So we should see some water spraying, spitting out, and that's good. And we want it to keep going. I know some guys like to try and hold up on this the whole time. Well, there's a reason it keeps falling back down. It's by design. So uh, they usually won't reset until around seven, eight pounds or so, but, but let it go until 10 
and then try and reset it. And if it doesn't reset, you know, if you still got air coming out, then you might have to replace our air, water, whatever. Uh, well, if you got water, it, you shouldn't have reset it. But don't reset until there's no water. But anyways, after it's set up, if you got a little air coming out still, it might need cleaned or replaced. But uh, I'll show you what I mean here. We're gonna go ahead and leave that. We're gonna open up our air valve. We're gonna open up our fast fill. Oh, one other thing. Uh, what you heard was uh, water and air come out of that auto vent, which is good. That's what we want. But let's shut our uh, top valve here. We won't build pressure if we don't close that. Okay, so now we're going to open the fast fill. You see that water coming out? me silence the supervisory will not allow me to silence the low air any of you uh, alarm guys out there watching want to tell me what's up with that so yeah basically I've been trying to silence this and it would not silence while I had low air but now I got the low air cleared out I still have my valve shut so I have a supervisory for the tamper but it allowed me to silence that so anyways, we have our so we have our air pressure going through the regulator, and then it comes around and it's going in, going into the system. It's up to our air pressure uh, low air switch. So now the system is at uh, about almost 14 pounds, which is good. We want to be minimum 13, maximum 20. That's straight out of the book on these valves. It's not my opinion. That is what they recommend. Um, so then now we have air pressure coming down and pushing on the actuator. So now the actuator is closed. So at this point, uh, we can allow water into the priming and it's going to stop here. It's not going to allow it to discharge the drain. So we'll come around here and down here, we'll open up our... Uh, valve and so now we're bringing that water straight off the system side around up through here and it's putting pressure onto the uh, push rod assembly and you can see we are not building pressure yet and that is because it's now draining out the auto vent We'll pull up on the auto vent and you'll see the pressure shot up and we can let off the auto vent. For some reason the camera keeps turning off um, and I didn't notice it the first time. Look back and it, when I was all done it wasn't recording. So I don't know if I got it or not but basically I set the dry valve up just like we would any valve. And then I did a main drain test. Um, and the main drain test is required by NFPA 25. Uh, and the reason is, is anytime you operate a control valve, you're required to do the main drain test. So we do a main drain test at the very beginning to flush anything out, make sure everything's good, we got a good water supply. And then we do one again at the end. And the, the last one I did, I don't let it flow near as long. I just need to see that this valve opened all the way. 
uh, so I get a good residual and I'm fine with that and I close it. But we're just verifying because this indicator could be saying it's open, but the butterfly in there could still be closed. And, uh, you know, because it could have broke at the shaft, uh, or broke anywhere in here. And even though the handle operates normal, this indicator operates. If it's not operating the actual butterfly in there, um, you know, the valve could still be closed. So the main drain is verifying that that valve did open and it opened fully. Uh, so that, you know, I did, like I said, it wasn't recording. And then I also did an alarm check. I'll go ahead and do the alarm check again, but we're doing it because, uh, let me make sure it's reset. We're doing it because we did not get it during the uh, trip test, but that's most likely because it was a partial trip and we didn't build enough water pressure to get up to the switch. Um, the, the, that's the bad thing about a partial trip is just because I can manually activate this, that still doesn't mean that that I showed you them holes inside where the water has to get in and get over to that pressure switch. That piping could be blocked and preventing it from getting up there. So we won't know for sure that that works unless we do a full trip. Uh, you know, a lot of times they'll still come in even on a partial, but on this one it did not. But we are going to test. Let's you know make sure our alarm does work. It's awfully slow. Okay, there it is though. So it did come in. The first time I did it, it actually took even longer than that. But I can shut it back off. But like I said, that's still not, uh, it's not really telling us for sure that when this operates, the alarm's gonna work. But there's nothing I can do. I cleaned everything in there. You know, I can't do a full trip. It's not due for it, and I can't really do it right now because of the uh, time of year. Uh, it's too cold to be doing one. So uh, anyways, we got everything cleaned in there. We know the switch works. So uh, that's all we can really do to verify the, on the alarms. So here, I tell you right now, part of our problem, the reason we didn't get, so this makes me feel a little better uh, that this alarm probably will work when the system trips. It didn't get enough pressure built up, and let me show you why. You see that there? EPS 40? Well, that is a low air switch. So 40 is telling us uh, you know, it operates at a higher pressure. It all depends what it's actually set at. And I bet you this one is a 10. Um, I can't see it, so we'll check later and verify that. So typically you would have the 40 over here on a low air and uh, your 10 is going to be your alarm switch. Uh, I don't know if they use the 10 over here because we're dealing with lower air pressure. Uh, they make a low air switch. I believe, I believe it's like a uh, 15. I don't remember you know, if it's a Potter or system sensor, but, but they actually make one to help you battle that issue uh, where you need the low air you know, set at a lower pressure. Uh, but in this case, I think they just swap the switches, but that's that's kind of the issue That's why this is when I open up that alarm valve. It took a while for the switch to activate It's because it's set up at a higher pressure uh, We'll go ahead and open this up and we'll dial that pressure down some and that'll kind of help us We'll loosen our set screw And then here on our switch Increase, so we want to go the opposite way. While that's open, a little check. That's much better.
so it'll probably operate a lot better next time when we do a partial trip, but uh, you can hear it click right away. There still is a delay on this uh, panel, but uh, that's much better. Yeah, it just takes a couple of seconds. Go ahead and correct the problem if you can. That would have still functioned. It was just a little bit higher pressure. You saw before, you know, well, right now we're only running about 45 pounds, but so it was probably set up on that higher range. So it, it was needing at least 30 pounds to uh, activate it. But anyways, uh, takes a little bit of time or just a few seconds. Sometimes you can fix some things. So I think that's it. Hope I didn't miss anything. Every valve when I'm done, I always look everything over. So obviously I know we're open because we did a main drain test. But I'm gonna verify my priming water is on to get water up to the push rod assembly and all that. So we're good there. We can't shut the alarm. There's not a, a valve to shut the alarm off. That's a key one to look for because that's easy to leave off if you shut it off for some reason. But we don't have one on this. Um, really not anything else. I'm going to leave that gauge. Uh, airlines on. We're going through like that. We can go ahead and do a quick check, make sure we didn't get any water back. No, we did not. So it is drain good. Uh, I'm going to carry on with my inspection, but it's just a wet system over here. Nothing exciting. This is all I wanted to show on this one. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you would, go down, like, subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, feel free to comment. And thank you for watching.